Morning guys, welcome to church. It's great to have you with us. Absolutely fantastic to have you joining with us. So give me a shout if you're watching at home on Facebook. 
give me a shout if you're watching on our online platform. And finally, give me the biggest shout if you're in our Lango building. Oh, it's great to have you with us. We hope you're enjoying watching um, over the last few weeks. And we hope you continue to enjoy it. It's really, really good to have you with us. We're so happy you can be with us. And thank you for you know joining us this morning. Straight away, we're going to get into a time of worship. And this can be really difficult in your own homes. But I really encourage you to worship like you normally do on a Sunday morning. To stand up, to sing, to raise your hand and just take part. So open your heart, open your ears and open your mouth and sing. Let's hear you. God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, you spoke through the dark and fleshed out the wonder of life. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born In the vapor of your breath the planets form If the stars were made to worship so alive I can see your heart in everything you made Every burning star signaled by a grace If creation sings your praises so alive God of your promise you don't speak in vain, no syllable empty or void. But once you have spoken, all nature and sights follow the sound of your voice. Oh, and as you speak, a hundred billion creatures catch your breath Evolving in pursuit of what you said If it all reveals your nature so alive I can see your heart in everything you say Every painted sky, a canvas of your grace. If creation still obeys you, so will I. Yeah. 
down my heart through all of my failure and pride. On a hill you created the light of the world, abandoned in darkness to die. As you speak, a hundred billion failures disappear. Where you lost your life, so I could find it here. If you left the grave behind you, so alive, I can see your heart and everything you. Every part designed in a work of art called love If you gladly chose surrender, so will I I can see your heart a billion different ways Every precious one, a child you die to What measure could amount to your desire? You're the one who never leaves the one behind How good was that? I love that song. Isn't it great to just be able to sing and to worship and to really, really belt a song out? Um, as I say, it can be weird in your own homes, but I just encourage you to do it more and more and more. And I promise you, the more you do it, the more comfortable you'll be and the easier it gets. Do it with your family, encourage your kids. Just absolutely give it your all. That's great. Now we're going to take up our offering. Um, the buckets are coming around. And they're not. I'm kidding. As if we're going to send a bucket to each house, that'd be crazy. But quite hard. But we have lots of options to give online. They'll come up on the screen, so you can give by standing order. Um, you can give on the online platform. There's lots and lots of ways you can give. So I encourage you to keep giving again, as you normally would. Now more than ever, uh, we need your support to continue our ministry, to continue giving the gifts and continue doing what we're doing. So we're going to take our offering now. After that, we're going to go into our preach. Hey, well, good morning and welcome to Now Church. We are really glad that you are here uh, this morning as we continue our series on choices. We started last week looking at some of the choices that we make. You see, we all make choices. We all make hundreds of choices. You have made loads of choices already today. 
um, you've, you've chosen to get up this morning, you could have stayed in bed, you've chosen, or maybe you are still watching in bed, I don't know. Uh, you, you've chosen how to engage in church this morning, you've chosen either to come out to Langold or maybe you've, you're watching on Facebook or on our online platform, maybe you're watching on Catch Up as well, but you've made some choices. You've cho- chosen what to have for breakfast or you've chosen not to have breakfast this morning. You've, you've chosen what to wear and you've chosen uh, where to sit as well. You've chosen who you're going to sit next to or maybe not. Don't look at the person sat next to you if you would rather not be sat next to them. But we've made some choices this morning uh, and maybe the choices that you've made today, you know, they feel quite small, they feel quite inconsiderate, but you've made some choices and life is made up of choices. Our our end result is going to be made up of the choices that we make along the journey. You know, life is a bit of a journey and where we end up is going to be a result of the choices that we make on that journey, which is why we're looking at choices. See, choices are such a massive part of our lives and I think most of us, you know, we're concerned or we're considering our future. You know, not many people, I think, just wander or meander through life. Actually, uh, we, we want to achieve something. We want to get somewhere. We want to be a certain kind of person. But that never happens unless we make some choices on how that is going to happen. And we all kind of want to know the where. We all want to know the what. But we were looking last week at how, you know, actually, that's not always obvious. And we can get frustrated with God for not giving us all of the answers. We would love to have a a mapped out journey. We would love to know the end result. Um, But sometimes, and usually God just gives us some steps. He gives us the next step that we need to take. And too often, I think we concentrate on the future uh, and we concentrate on where our lives might be in five years time. And God's saying, well, actually, just look at where you are right now and let's concentrate on where you are. But the one place that kind of God has given us a, a clear direction for and clear purpose in our lives and clear kind of answers to, to sometimes these questions that we ask, it's not about the what, but it's about the who. It's about the who we are. And I think God has given us some clarity on who we should be. And that's more important than the what we should be doing. God cares more about who you are than what you do. And your primary purpose in life isn't to be, you know, a great business leader or a great teacher or, you know, to to have a nice house or a nice car. Your primary purpose is is about you worshipping God. It's about you loving God. It's about you being a good person. And that's, that's more of what God is interested in than what you can achieve. You see, the who is more important than the what. But sometimes we we ask more about the what than we do about the who. I think sometimes, you know, the what might be, we think is more visible to other people or we, you know, society might value the what more than the who. But God values the who today. When we, when, we, when we get to heaven, when we die and all with God, I don't think he's going to be, he's not going to be asking you so much about the what you did, but about the who you are. See, we all have great opportunities to be in the who that God made us to be. And it doesn't matter if you are, you know, leading something phenomenal with thousands of employees and millions of pounds in the bank, or if you're a single mum with, with not much money, uh, and you know you're just taking all of your time to look after your children actually the who can be the same who are you ha- who are you as you do that are you good are you kind are you loving are you just are you humble the who is more important than the what but as we as we do look uh, forward and i think this is uh, a time lockdown, coronavirus, it's kind of been a pause moment in our lives where we are kind of a pausing and reflecting and saying, well, actually, you know, what is next for me? How do I move forward from this moment? And hopefully we're considering God 
in all of that, but we are asking some questions. We are making some choices. And, and so we're looking at some of those choices that we can make. And last week we looked at starting. Actually, what do you need to start to, to become the person that God wants you to be? To, to achieve maybe what God has put on your heart. What is your starting place today? You see, all stories have a start. Everything has a start. And what was your starting place? But today we're doing exactly the opposite of starting. And so last week, what are you going to start? But today we are looking at stopping. What do we need to stop? A couple of years ago, I uh, went on an advanced driving uh, school. Uh, that's what I like to call it. You might know it as a speed awareness course, um, but I don't like that kind of negative language. So I went on this uh, advanced driver training school and um, I'd driven to the venue, this you know hotel or whatever it was, and we all sat round tables and we're talking and introducing ourselves to each other. And quite early on in the day, uh, the the presentate the presentator, the the lecturer, whatever he is, uh, you know, he he went round the room and he was like, right then, so uh, why why do you speed? And he went round and he was asking most people, uh, and people were giving various different answers. You know, people were just like, we want to get there quicker. And uh, I was sat next to someone and he was like, I don't speed. And the instructor was like, what do you mean you don't speed? You're here today because you've been caught speeding. He was like, yeah, but I never speed. Uh, and then he asked me, he said, uh, why do you speed? And I said, to be honest, it's because I, I really get bored when I'm driving and I just want the journey to be over. I'd rather be at my destination than on the journey. And uh, there's probably loads in that we could unpack for another preach. Um, but I was like, I just get bored, get bored on the journey, I want to be at the destination. Um, and uh, I don't know, he, he then started to, to pick on me, I felt. He said, oh, okay, so you get bored whilst you drive. I said, yeah. And he said, okay, tell me, what's your name? So I said, oh, Marcus. And in that moment, I thought, oh, please, please don't let him ask me what I do for a living. Uh, and he said, Marcus, what do you do for a living? I said, oh, thanks, God. I said, um, I'm a pastor. He goes, a pastor? I said, yeah, like I work for a church. He goes, like a priest? And I was like, well, sort of. He goes, right then, uh, Marcus the priest. And um, he goes, um, you get bored whilst you drive. I said, yes, I get bored whilst I drive. He said, let's look at this uh, for a moment. He said, let's look at the best case scenario for you. He said, uh, you get bored whilst you're driving. So you're on the motorway, let's say on a 50 mile an hour, 50... Um, mile journey you're on the motorway and uh, you're a bit bored so you decide to speed a little bit you you go from 70 miles an hour to 80 miles an hour i said okay and he goes how much time do you think you're going to save by that journey i said i don't know 10 minutes he goes no under five minutes you're safe on that journey and i was a bit shocked maybe you're a bit shocked as well maybe this is helping you today uh if you struggle with speeding um but I was like, oh, okay. He goes, so best case scenario for you, Marcus, you're speeding uh, and best case scenario is you're bored for a few minutes less uh, whilst you're in the car. I said, yeah, that's best case scenario. He goes, right then, now let's look at the worst case scenario. And he said, Marcus, as a man of the cloth, as a priest, uh, I imagine you need your car for work. I said, yeah, it's really helpful being able to drive uh, for work. He said, well, you know, if you get caught speeding again, um, you could lose your license. He goes, and how, how would the church feel about that? I said, they might not be very happy uh, with me. And he goes, Marcus, uh, are you, do you have a family? I said, yeah, I've got a family. And he said, uh, how would your family feel if you um, couldn't drive anymore? And I was like, oh, I don't think my wife would be very happy uh, with me. He said, oh, so it might make things a little bit more difficult at home. I said, that's probably an understatement, uh, to be honest. Um, and he goes, right then, well, let's, let's keep looking. So, um, you know, you, you're speeding one day and you, you hit someone and you injure someone. I said, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty bad. He said, maybe, maybe worse, uh, you kill someone. And uh, it, it got a bit serious in the room. I said, yeah. And he goes, you, you end up in prison um, for, 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 for killing someone. He goes, it's, it's quite a bad worst case scenario. He goes, it gets worse. Maybe you're speeding one day and you kill yourself. He said, Marcus, your best case scenario, 
uh, when you choose to speed is that you're bored for a few less minutes. Your worst case scenario is you lose your job, you lose your family, you lose your life or you take someone else's life, you end up in prison. He said, is it really worth it? That choice that you make. You see, all choices have consequences, don't we? And I think last week we looked at maybe some of the good consequences of our choices. Some of the good results when we make positive choices in our lives, when we start something new, um, it can have a good consequence. It can have a good result, but it's also true the other way round. When we are making bad decisions in our lives, actually we can end up with bad results. You see, our decisions have consequences. And last week we said maybe there's some things that we need to start in order to be the person uh, that God wants us to be, but also maybe there's some things today that we might need to stop in order to be the people that God wants us to be. See, I think we all have some regrets in life. Occasionally I'll meet someone and they say they have no regrets. And I'm like, are you crazy? I think we all regret uh, things in our lives. How can you have no regrets? How can you not learn from, from some of the mistakes we've made in the past? See, each choice I think is like a stepping stone. We're all on this journey and maybe we're crossing over a, a, a river and we're stepping from stone to stone and we have choices about which step to go on, which stone to move forward to. And today, I want us just to take a moment, maybe to pause where we are and to look at the path that we are taking, to look where we're going to be at the end of this route. I was talking to someone and he was going through a bit of a hard time in his marriage and we, we talked and we, we looked back, we said, let's take a moment, let's look back and see where it, it started to go wrong because there was never one big moment where it all went wrong. Actually, it started with some choices that he had made years and years ago that had set him off on this path. And I said, you know, if you could change it now, would you? And he said, absolutely, yes, I would. And you know what, there's some choices that maybe you've made in your path, past and you're already on that path, but it's not too late. Today we can stop, we can pause, and we can redirect. Uh, and maybe you're about to make a decision, maybe you're about to, to do something, and to, let's just take a pause and say, actually, where is this road going to end? Is this the path that I need to be on? Is this the path that I should be on? See, some, I think some uh, choices that we make are quite easy. You know, if you are out stealing today, you know, the choice is easy, stop stealing. Uh, and some choices are easy, but some choices are, are quite hard. Maybe you're saying today, you know what, uh, you know, I love my family um, and I wanna be with them, but also if I, if I work harder, I get this new job, um, yeah, I'll be away from them less or away from them more, but I'll be able to provide financially for them in a better way. And so you're weighing up um, you're weighing up those different options. Maybe, you know, you're, you're, you're struggling at the moment because church isn't happening. And one of the reasons you went to church was to try and find your future husband or wife. And uh, I think it's harder to find someone online. Um, but maybe imagine that you've, you've found this boy or you found this girl and you're saying, well, actually, you know what? They're not quite perfect, but who is perfect? None of us are perfect. And if I wait for the perfect person, then I could be waiting for all of my life. And you're making some hard choices. Maybe you're sat there this morning and you're reflecting and you're saying, you know what? It, it wasn't a lie that I told that person. I just didn't reveal all of the truth to that person. And it's because I wanted to protect them. I don't know. What are the choices that you're facing this morning? They're not always easy. You know, uh, if I move house, well, yes, we'll have a bigger mortgage and things will be a little bit tighter. Um, but if we budget well and nothing goes wrong, we'll be okay. And then we'll have a bigger asset at the end of it. So things uh, might be better. We, we make hard choices and our choices aren't always easy. A number of years ago, I was out with uh, some friends and we were in the Lake District uh, and we were walking up Scarfell Pike. Um, 
and we got there quite early in the morning we were the first ones there and and we set off walking and i'd done scarfell pike maybe a couple of times before um, but this morning was a little bit different it was it was a little bit colder and as we kind of got halfway up uh, the paths were covered with snow and, and no one else had been up there um, before so there was no obvious way and and so we kind of had to make a choice what what are we going to do here is it this way is it that way we weren't quite sure the path wasn't obvious and so I said right I think let's go this way um, I think this is going to be the right way so we started walking and we started getting deeper and deeper into the snow and um, I was like, it's okay guys, let's just keep going, let's keep going. And so we went deeper and deeper into the snow. And I remember at one point it was up to our waists uh, and we were soaking wet as well by this point because snow is wet. And, and someone said to me, right, I, I think we should turn around. And I said, no, if we just keep on going, it's going to be okay. And so we kept on going for a little bit longer. And um, eventually though, I, we had to stop. And we had to say, right, this, this isn't working. And we, we had to take a new path, a new direction. And, and so we kind of worked our way back somewhere else where it was a lot easier to walk. Um, and, and I remember we, we finished kind of getting up to the top of the hill. And by which time there were some other people on the hill as well. And I remember looking at this, this other group of people. And I looked at them and I looked at their trousers and they were dry. Maybe, maybe they were a little bit wet at the bottom, but they were, they were practically dry. And there was us, freezing, wet, miserable, cold, and there was them dry. You see, their path that they had taken was different to the path that we had taken. Our paths, though, can be hard. Our choices can be hard. It's not always easy to decide what to do. But today, let's take a moment. Let's pause to consider whether our choices are taking us in the right direction or not. Sometimes, again, it's obvious our choices are taking us in the wrong, the wrong direction. We don't just need to pause, we just need to stop and change direction. See, we kept on walking in the snow and it didn't, it didn't work out. And maybe just take a pause. Let's take a moment and change course. If you're looking at your life and you're like, actually, this isn't where I want to be. If I keep going on this path, actually the direction's not right. Today is a day that you can change course. And that's what repentance means. It means changing course, doing something different. And today we can stop and we can change course. I wanna look in Exodus chapter 18, if you've got your Bibles um, with you, the story of Moses. And uh, Moses was this, this great leader and um, he'd, he'd led the Israelites out of captivity, out of slavery, and he was leading them towards the promised land. And we find our story in a kind of Exodus uh, 18. They've, they've left Egypt and, and things are, are, are okay. They're not wandering around in the desert um, yet, but they're, they're, they're on their way. They're still on this journey to the promised land. And uh, Moses, you know, he's, he's the man of God. And through him, God's been providing uh, food and fruit, water, uh, and okay, I think things are doing well, and, and they're winning battles, actually. When they, when they fought other people, they, they've won those battles, uh, and life is good, uh, and Moses is ruling, and he's judging, and there was quite a lot of people. They reckon there was probably about 2.4 million people um, in the land, and so things are going well. And then Moses' father-in-law appears. So his father-in-law Jethro had come to, to meet Moses, to visit Moses, brought Moses' wife and children with him. And so I imagine Moses, you know, gives him the grand tour. It says in the Bible, after they asked each other about their health, he, he showed him and he, he recounted stories of how things were going well and how they were winning battles and how they had food, manna from God and how he had struck a rock and water had come out and they had a good day and you know that night I imagine they rested and then the next morning was a kind of back to work day for Moses and um, it says this in verse 13 of chapter 18 of Exodus it says the next day Moses sold dis solved disagreements among the people and the people stood around him from morning until night 
when Moses, his father-in-law, saw all that Moses was doing for the people, he asked, what is all of this you are doing for the people? Why are you the only one to solve disagreements? All of the people are standing around you from morning until night. Then Moses said to his father-in-law, it is because the people come to me for God's help in solving their disagreements. When people have a disagreement, they come to me and I decide who is right. I tell them God's law and God's teaching. And Moses was just kind of continuing in this pattern. And I imagine Jephro kind of stood back and just watched and thought, this is crazy. You've stood there all day making decisions and, and you've hardly scratched the surface. Can you imagine 2.4 million people coming to you with their problems? I mean, it's, it's ridiculous, it's, it's stupid, and that's what Jeffro is saying. This is not going to work. This is not gonna happen. And so he says in verse 17, Moses' father-in-law said to him, you are not doing this right. Basically, stop what you are doing. You and the people who come to you will get too tired. This is too much work for you. You can't do it by yourself. Now listen to me and I will give you some advice. And so Jethro Moses, his father-in-law, he advises Moses, he says, listen, train up some other people. You can, you can help them, you can train them, but get other people to do some of this. Appoint them as leaders over different groups of people. But this is ridiculous. You can't do this. Stop what you are doing. Because sometimes the, what we are doing is stopping us from doing what we, be, what we should be doing. And it's never going to be effective. And Jeffro gives this advice. He says, listen, this is the advice I'm going to give you. I want God to be with you. And it's true for you today. You know what? We want God to be with you. The decisions that you're making, are they helping God be with you or are they not helping God to be with you? Is it going to be good for your faith? Is it going to be good for your family's faith? Is it going to be good for those you have influence on, for their faith? Is it going to help God to be with you? with us and Jeffrey started his advice with I want God to be with you this decision that you're making this choice that you're making is it going to help you know God more is it going to help you draw closer to God because we want God to be with you he said keep on talking to God Keep on talking to God. And that's a choice that we all need to make. You know, I think even when the answers aren't obvious, keep on talking to God. Maybe you're desperate for the next step that you, you need to take. Maybe you're, you are on pause at the moment. You're like, I don't know how long I can stay on this pause. I need to choose what to do. And you've been crying out to God. You've been praying, God, give me the answer. Give me the answer. I want to encourage you, just keep on talking to God. I've noticed that when, the more I pray, you know, even if, even if I don't get the, the revelation that I'm desperate for, God does a work in me. And sometimes we might be facing some situations and, and it seems like, you know, we're praying and praying, but the situation doesn't change. But let me assure you, the more you pray, the more time that you spend with God, even if the situation doesn't change, your change, your change. You see, the more time we spend with God, the more we change. And God wants you to change. God wants you to spend more time with him. So keep on talking to God. And then he said to Moses, listen, you need to teach and you need to delegate. You need to teach and you need to delegate out this. And I, I think, you know, each and every one of us can be used by God to help others. And maybe when you look at these choices that you're making today, the choices that you have in your life, well, say, actually, what am I going to be teaching others through this choice? What am I teaching others? What advice would I give someone else in this situation? 
How is this decision going to affect others? If my child was asking me for advice in this situation, what would I advise them to do? And we teach others. But look at your choice, fast forward it. Fast forward the decisions that we are making now and see what they're like, your health, the way we eat, the way we exercise. At the moment, it might be okay. Fast forward 10 years and the decisions that we make now will have an impact on our health. Maybe right now, you know what, you're really busy with life and you know, it's, it's okay, you know, life gets busy, but if you are still going at the pace that you are going now, in 10 years time, have a look at your family. Have a look at your relationship with your friends. What are they going to be like? Are they gonna be uh, okay still in 10 years time or not? Fast forward your decisions today. Maybe you're spending a little bit more than, you can, uh, than you're earning right now. You're not sticking to your budgets. Maybe you're just putting a little bit more on the credit card each month. Hey, well, let's fast forward those decisions right now. Where's that gonna lead you in 10 years time? Where will that lead you? Maybe you're prioritizing Facebook over the Bible. Fast forward that decision. What's that gonna look like in a few years time? Are you gonna be glad of all that time you spent in face on Facebook whilst neglecting the Bible? Maybe you're making choices, you need to, to feel in control, you need to grab every situation um, and, and be the one uh, to be in control of that situation. Hey, fast forward, fast forward. What's that gonna look like in a few years time? What's that gonna look like in your life? Have a look at some of the things that we're doing today and have a look at what we know God has already said about our lives. Maybe you don't know the direction for the what, but the who is there and match them up. If I fast forward how I'm living now, is that gonna help me be the who that God wants me to be or not? And maybe there's something that we need to stop today so that we can be the people that God wants us to be. And when we, when we become the people that God wants us to be, when we live in line with God's purposes and God's plans for us, then there's no better place for us to be. See, he's our designer, he's our maker, and he knows how he made you, and he knows the best place. And when we try to be like that, then life goes well. Hey, don't, don't stop hundreds of things today, but pick one, pick one. Maybe what do you need to stop today? Let me finish by reading this verse from Hebrews chapter 12. It says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great crowd, cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hey, church, let me encourage you today to fix your eyes upon Jesus, to throw off everything that hinders so that you can fix your eyes upon Jesus today. Wow, what a great word from God. What a timely word. What a really, really encouraging, timely word. Thank you. That was so good. This is all we've got time for this week. So thank you so much for joining us. Again, whether it was online, via Facebook, on the online platform, or in person at Lango Building. That was great. It's lovely to see you. Following this, we've got the pre-youth, which is now available at nowkids.online.church. So if you want to watch that, you need to switch channels. Don't just think it's going to come on, because it won't. So thank you again for joining us. I hope you have an amazing week. Um, stay safe. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep believing. And I'm sure soon we'll be back together, meeting together in God's house. Keep safe. And who can melt the hardest heart? And speak life into my soul.
Every heart